Someone turn the box. All right, so welcome everyone. Thanks for coming to the Tools and Technology Seminar. Uh, for anyone who hasn't been here or been here a while, it's just sort of a venue to discuss tools, technologies, methodologies. Um, they could be in development, they could be released, they could be new, they could be old and used in novel way. Also, saying hopefully tools and tech that we are discussing. Uh, there's a sign-in sheet. Uh, hopefully everybody signed in. If not, please do so. Again, it just helps uh, us prove that there are people here to pizza so we can uh, bring that and I'll just bring that back to me so if anyone hasn't signed in. Uh, so I'd like to introduce today's speaker, we have Hong Yong Lee, who uh, got his PhD here at Bioinformatics and is now a postdoc in Wapang Lanza. Thank you, Marcy, for the introduction. Uh, thanks to everyone for coming today. It's my pleasure to present here at the Tools and Tech Seminar. Um, today I'm going to present this um, software called Taiji. Uh, uh, approaching experimental replicates level accuracy for drug synthesis prediction. So before I go into the details, let me introduce some background. Oh, I see. Thanks. Yeah, so. When we treat, uh, let's say, a cancer cell with the drug, usually you will have a um, called dose response curve. So here in this figure, the red dwarfs are the, um, uh, you know, the the, the uh, response measures during your experiments. So the y-axis is the response. You can consider this as how many, what's the percentage of cell living after a treatment, and the x-axis is the dose of a single drug. Uh, after you got this, uh, this uh, the red point, and then you can fit a curl. Uh, usually, it's a, a sigmoidal curl, as shape, and then uh, you can also calculate some uh, metrics, for example, ICPP, which is uh, the number and uh, the, the concentration of a drug you need to kill half of the uh, cells, and then you can also have a slope. So all these uh, metrics can evaluate you know, how good your, uh, the drug is and to treat this cancer uh, cell lab. So basically, this, uh, th this red point corresponding to the number in the table. The yellow one are the dose, and the, white, and the, the blue one are the response. Um, and people found that when, when you treat, uh, like, say, a cancer, a single drug usually have some issue the cancer can develop some drug re resistance. So, uh, actually, back into uh, back to 1995, I think uh, people have developed a, a cocktail treatment for HIV. And uh, you may already know that it's kind of a, combine a lot of different drugs with uh, disease or cancer that can achieve better efficacy. Uh, when you measure this, we, you can also use uh, a similar idea using uh, drug screening. Basically, this time you have a uh, dose response surface instead of a curl. Uh, the original data here, you have drug A and drug B, you have a table. And then for every combination, you have a response value. And then you put them into this uh, surface and then got, got a surface like this. Uh, this is two drugs and this is a uh, uh, response. Uh, uh, so the effect of two drug can be a simple one, additive. Uh, basically means uh, you know that's the, the, the response is uh, uh, the addi uh, additive effect of two drugs. And sometimes you can have a synergistic effect, which means it's better than additive, uh, additive effect. And also sometimes you can also have an antagonistic which means it's worse than the uh, additive effect. Uh, <clears throat> uh, but here the situation is we have uh, some experimental measurement to, of the you know, drug combination. But let's consider uh, a simple case. When we have uh, 100 drugs and 100 cell lines, so the total number of combination will be very huge. For example, this, in this case, there will be 1 million. So you can, it's kind of infeasible to measure all this um, combinational effect 
using you know experimental drug screening. So that's why we need a computation tool to predict um, combinational effect of two drugs um, based on some observed data. Um, so in 2015, uh, we have this challenge. Uh, AstraZeneca Sanger Drug Combination Prediction Dream Challenge. Uh, so basically for this challenge, the aim is to predict uh, the drug synergy based on some information, including monotherapy data. That's the, uh, basically that's the dose response curve of a single drug. We, uh, they also provided uh, the baseline molecular data, which means um, the, let's say the gene expression level of a uh, cancer cell line without any treatment. And also, let's say mutation and methylation and copy number variation, all these genetic profiles of a uh, cancer cell line. Meanwhile, we have some information about the drug targets and also some other prior knowledge, for example, the gene gene infection network. So the aim is based on all this information to predict the drug synergy. And in this challenge, they, uh, this is the data set they use in the challenge covering uh, 85 cancer cell lines. And this is uh, basically the uh, distribution of different uh, cancer subtypes. And then including more than 100 drugs and nine, more than 900, 900 drug combinations. And they have a, to a total more than 10,000 experiments. So this experiment is a 10,000 drug drug uh, cancer cell line combination. And the evaluation is um, based on blind evaluation, based on testing data size, pulled out for the testing. You cannot say it during your model screening. Um, this I want to let you know a uh, fact is that this is uh, the 3D cube of uh, drug A, drug B, and cell line. And the blue dots here are the uh, <clears throat> combination have uh, measurements uh, that's corresponding to this number. But in fact, it only covers a, uh, only less than 1% of the entire queue. It's more than 99% are missing in the, the entire, all the possible combinations. So there's a lot of, you know, to do and uh, uh, still, I mean, without the computation prediction, it's really hard to, you know, to measure all the, all of this, uh, uh, this combinations in this. Uh, so the challenge have two tasks. Uh, the first is sub one is, uh, let's say this is a, is, is a table. So the uh, rows are the drug drug combination and columns are different cell lines. So the blue one are the unknown one, are, are the uh, combination that have a known synergy score. For the, uh, for the red question mark, that's in sub-challenge one. Uh, for example, this one, you have this uh, drug combination change score in some known cell line, and you need to predict in an uh, unknown cell. That's the right question mark. And for sub-challenge two, that's the blue question mark. For, let's say this one, this pair, uh, we don't have any combinational score or synergy score in any of these cell lines. And then you need to predict the group. Uh, any questions so far? And then the software. Parameters of the sorry? cell line is growth. What are the parameters of the uh, they, they call it the cell viability, basically how many living cells you have after treatment for, you know, for a certain time. Yeah. And then uh, Yuan Fang participated in this challenge and uh, uh, won both of the sub-challenges. So that's why I'm presenting this um, software based on her winning algorithm in this challenge. Um, so here are some details about uh, the algorithm. So first, uh, uh, this, this algorithm has three components, uh, basically three, three type of model. The first one is based on the dose response curve of a single drug. Uh, 
you can you can have all these uh, the file measurements, <clears throat> and then you can also have the slope, efficacy, and other uh, metrics of a single drug response. And this is the first model. The second model is in this cube, as I showed you before. Uh, you can count the frequency of a, a drug or a cell line or a drug cell line combination. That's the second model. And <clears throat> the third one is, uh, you know, this is the information based on the drug. And on the other side, you can have some information based on the cancer cell line. So uh, you have the gene expression profile, copy number variation, mutation, methylation of all the cancer cell lines. Uh, without any treatment. So this, uh, I want to emphasize this because uh, let me consider a situation here. So we have the pre-treatment profile for all the cell lines, you know, and you have uh, many genes, let's say, more than 10,000 genes, and you have this matrix. But the, ta the, the, ta the question is we need to predict for all these cell lines the, the response of a drug in this cell line. Uh, since this uh, <clears throat> this um, genomic profile only pre treatments, so basically when you when you want to predict the drug response of two different drugs in the same cell line, the input feature will be the same because you only have the pre treatment genomic profile. So basically, this is uh, if you only based on this data, it's kind of a mission impossible because you know two drugs. They have the same input feature as the genomic file without any treatment. Um, uh, so what Yuan Fang did is um, he, you uh, created a net network propagation method to address this problem to basically to simulate the post-treatment profile of uh, all the drugs. Basically, increase this uh, from the 2D space to uh, expand it to 3D space so that for different drugs, you can have different post treatment genomic profile. And uh, how <clears throat> how can we get the post treatment treatment profile? Is based this is based on the uh, drug target information and also uh, some prior knowledge as to the gene gene interaction network. So the details are, <clears throat> for example. Uh, in the original uh, genomic profile, let's say the RNA expression, uh, if, uh, if, the, if a gene is a target of the, of the drug, of the treatment, then we simulate the number of the gene expression to zero. It means uh, this assumption here is uh, this gene is you know, inhibited by the drug, so there's no expression at all. Uh, <clears throat> so it's really the protein coding for that. It's, it's kind of a it's a it's kind of very strong assumption here. It's kind of a, the gene or the protein is targeted by this drug, so that it it lost lost its function. It's and similar to it's the same as there's no expression of the gene, this protein or this gene at all. That's this idea, and then that's only for a, a small number of genes because you know for one drug it can only have maybe six or seven drug targets, right? Uh, but we also have the gene gene interaction network. Basically, means for another gene, that's a non target gene, but it has some interaction with the target gene. So, we based on the connection between these two genes, we can also simulate the value of the, the non target gene after the treatment. So, basically, if uh, the two genes are strongly connected, then that gene is also. <coughs> Uh, the expression level of that gene will be also become lower. You can assume they are in the same pathway and be affected by the drug target gene. Yeah. How are you validating your simulation? Like, how do you know your network structure is right? And like, how do you know that your simulations of the effect of the drug on gene interactions is uh, high? So basically, uh, one thing we can do it. You can do is uh, to uh, to test the performance of the, the your simulation, right? you have uh, one model based on the feature without any without any you know post treatment simulation, and they have another model with the simulation. If the assumption is correct, or the simulation is correct, 
that you should have a increased performance. Yeah, that's so, uh, so you have data about, uh, I mean, you have RNA-seq data after the drug treatment. Like in this matrix, do you have, do you have expression data for like, the after effects of drug treatment? Yeah, you have the data for all the protein. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So then you can yeah. validate the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is the network created for the post-treatment data? No, this is, is it from literature or data sources created in advance. This is a pre uh it's published uh, network, yet it's before the challenge, uh every year before the challenge. So this this uh, network is based on uh, it's kind of an example of many different databases to create a network to estimate the gene gene interaction probability. Yeah. It's not based on the, the challenge data. Yeah. So that's not cell line specific network. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, sorry? it's not cell line specific. Right? It's not a cell line specific, it's just a general line network. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so after you got this post treatment profile, now this now this time for two different drugs the profile are different and then you can use this as a very unique uh, input feature to make predictions. That's the e part of the uh, third model. And then after that, uh, you can use the random forest model. Basically, it's a tree based model, and then you have many features. For example, the uh, the gene expression level it could be one feature in the tree. And then based on this, the tree decision, you make find your, your prediction whether, uh, what, what will be the standard score of uh, drug combination. And, and when you combine three different models, that's the final prediction, and you can make prediction for new drug, drug combination, uh, you know, unknown cell line. Uh, before I go to uh, yeah, go to the demo, so I, I'll <coughs> mention some results of this. So this is a tissue specific performance based on the challenge data. Basically, uh, uh, this this is a distribution because uh, for let's say for breast cancer cell lines, they have uh, I think thirty four different cell lines, breast cancer cell lines. So for each of them, you have a um, you can have a correlation between the experimental observation and your prediction. And, and this is the, the raw distribution, and then the, the, the dashed line here is the average value. Uh, uh, so in general, you can say the, they have some distribution. Some correlation could be you know, very poorly predicted in IQ, but overall, it's, uh, it's around 0.5. So the average correlation is 0.53. Uh, uh, on the other side, uh, the challenge organizer and data provider also carry out some experimental replicates to measure the, uh, you know, the same combination fast. And then you can calculate the correlation between the two replicates. That's 0.56. So basically, uh, this, our prediction is closing to the theoretical limit on this data size. Okay. And in terms of runtime, uh, we also do some tests. Let's say we have a uh, one hander, or different numbers of testing pairs, uh, and then this uh, is the runtime in the unit of minutes. So basically, you can run it. Let's say one hundred pair, it could be finished one in uh, five minutes. So on average, less than one second for uh, you know a, a one drug combination. And when you have more uh, pairs. Usually, this is not linear. You can observe it's not linear because uh, when you load the model, there's a, a overhead loading time. So when you have more numbers of testing pairs, usually the average running time for a single pair will be smaller. So that is uh, it's like a curve like this instead of linear. Uh, and you mentioned that this model is so this, the models are pre-trained so that the runtime could be. Uh, you know, very small. If you need to retrain the model, that will be take some extra time. Um, okay, so now let me go to the GitHub and show you.
so this is the GitHub page of this software. Um, basically, uh, when you want to use this software, what you can do is first uh, git clone this entire repository to your local computer. And then the dependency of this software is uh, very simple. Python, NumPy, and Scikit-learn. This is a very popular machine learning package, and uh, it's very easy to install. And, and I think Python and NumPy, if you install it using, let's say, Anaconda, by default, it has a NumPy install, so you don't need to install anything except for the Scikit-learn. Um, next, I'll explain all the data you need or let's say you, you want to use this software on your own data, so what, what you need to prepare. So basically, there are two types of data I needed. The first one is a, is a summary table of the monotherapy treatment. Um, so here, I just gave two examples of, uh, you know, uh, uh, so each row is an example. Let's say this is a, this is a cell line. This is a compound name A and compound name B. And you have the maximum concentration of uh, drug A and drug B. And the use of, you can also have the, you, you, I mean, we also need the uh, IC50. And this is a slope of the curve. And this is uh, the uh, estimated value. This is, so for IC50, for example, you have five points in your curve. You can have the slope and IC50. This is a uh, estimated maximum number of cells can be killed when you have a lot of uh, uh, drug to treat this uh, cell life. Um, and then you can also have the same IC50 slope and this uh, estimated value on the other drug. And for the synergy score, since this, uh, we need to predict this input, so this, uh, this is something we need to predict. And this is the quality of the uh, data. So by default, it's one, so it's, uh, it means uh, that it's good. Um, and also, you have the combination ID. That's basically the combination of the two drugs. And then you have a file name. Uh, the file name is uh, in the format uh, drug 1, drug, drug A, and drug B, and uh, cell line. And if you have multiple replicates, you can also uh, put it here, replicate 1. This is a summary table. Basically, this this, um, this table has some this uh, monotherapy information of this, and also is can can be an index of all the uh, uh, the the single I mean the dose response curve of a single drug. That's the actually that's the second part. So if you look at here, this is the second uh, input file you need, which is a monotherapy spreadsheet. So here, this is a uh, uh, six different concentration. The first one is a zero, which means uh, without any of this drug. So you can treat uh, you know, basically the first uh, line or the first uh, column as uh, uh, the dose response curve, the points on the dose response curve of a single drug. So this is uh, uh, the first drug and then the uh, second drug. Uh, since this is a monotherapy, so we don't have any combination value that's still in with NA here. And uh, here are some other information, the unit of the, uh, the concentration and the title of this. Um, uh, just want to mention something. If you look at, if you look at here, maybe you may, you may be wondering why this number is like larger than 100, right? It should be, the maximum should be 100, but I mean, in reality, when you do an experiment, usually the number will you have some fluctuation and variation in your data, so it's kind of a, uh, approximately 100. But you can look at the trend. When you have a higher concentration to treat a cancer cell line, usually the number becomes smaller. That's the number of uh, cells are still living after treatment. And similar here, you can see the trend going down, the number becomes smaller. And then after you prepare all this data uh, in the corresponding uh, repository, basically you need to put um, 
the uh, this uh, all this uh, monotherapy spreadsheet in this uh, subfolder after you know git clone the, the data. Um, and also you need a summary table here in, in this folder. That's the default directory. And after you doing that, you can start to run uh, this software. Uh, on the GitHub, we already provide some dummy data for like 100 testing cases. So you can, after, once you download it, you can directly run this one and start run prediction. Usually it takes less, less than 10 minutes, depends on your computer. Uh, maybe between one minute to minute. I finish prediction for all this 100 uh, testing drug combination. And also you can change some arguments to this uh, uh, software. The first one is I1, that's basically the first input of the uh, summary table. Uh, this is a file, and then this I2 is a second input. That's the, this is not a file, this is a directory where you save all this uh, monotherapy, uh, uh, those response curve. And then this always the output. By default, it's a current folder. So. And here are the are some uh, detailed uh, instruction about all the arguments. Uh, I also need to mention this. So they have three weights that corresponding to the three components. Uh, I mean, three types of model I mentioned earlier. So by default, the weight is one by one by two. This is based on Yuan Fang's original weighting solution. So on your own data, if you say, let's say if you think your model therapy is less reliable, you can change the weights to a smaller number, for example. And you can also, I mean, basically this is adjust the, all the weights of these three models. If you want to adjust, we can use a, a argument like this, weight one, and number, weight two, number, of weight three. Yeah, so <clears throat> this is, a, yeah, this is a, a, the overview of this, uh, GitHub software. Um, now let me go into the uh, data. You get real feeling. So this one is a summary table. Have. So this is a dummy data. So you can have, a, you can see here we have a, uh, you have the, as I mentioned before, you have cell line compound and all these uh, numbers here. And then this is this column, this uh, CNN score is all in a, this is something you need to be predict. And this table is, uh, uh, depends on how many pairs you need to predict. But for here we use, uh, we have 100 example data. So it's a 100 rows. Um, yeah, this is the first the input data. The second one is this folder, the monotherapy spreadsheet. So here in this folder, we have 100 different uh, uh, monotherapy data. Let's click randomly click one. So this is uh, in the same format as I mentioned before. This is for drug one and drug two. And the combination values will be NA because it's monotherapy. Yeah. Uh, once you run this prediction, it will generate a prediction file like this. Basically, we have the, the name of the cell line and the combination of two drugs. This is uh, drug one and drug two. And then you have a prediction value. Uh, since this is a uh, dummy data, so you can see the prediction value are around uh, 50. Uh, but in reality, the drug synergy value will be uh, around, around minus uh, 100 to uh, maybe 200 or 300, depends on the uh, this synergistic effect of uh, combination. Um, any questions so far? Well, this, um, 
where? Hey, um, maybe you think you could finish the story by yourself at this point. Are you looking at me? Sure. Anybody? Um, finish the story. Presentation. Nobody's going to do, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I actually have questions. Yes. I'm not really sure about the prediction score. Uh -huh. So you mean it's around for the reality is around the hundred and uh, to the two hundred? Minus one hundred to I think two hundred or three hundred. Oh minus? Yeah. Oh I see. because they could have an antagonistic effect. Which means they the combination is worse than you know than the actual effect of two thousand. Oh yeah. Um Yeah, so, and then the, the evaluation is based on the correlation between uh -huh. the synergy score, observed synergy score, and your predicted synergy score. Yeah, so, see, this is all uh, uh, I have here. Oh, any other? Yeah. Oh, uh, only on two drugs, right? Yeah. Uh, just wondering, can can we go like part like more dimensions? Yeah, yeah. So definitely. So currently, this model is only for two drugs. That's all for the simple case. But for let's say three drugs or more, first thing we need is uh, at least you need to have a uh, training data, right? Yeah, so, but currently we don't have this data on this challenge. I mean, based on this challenge. So, if we feel future, we have some data of more combinations, definitely we can build a model with this. The only, I think the only difference is uh, when you simulate the post treatment uh, genomic profiles, what you need to do, you need to consider, I say, three drugs instead of two drugs. You need to consider that, you know, the drug party gene of three drugs. And also the associated non-target gene of this uh, of this target gene. Yes. So according to Yuan Fang, uh, the chemical feature like fingerprints mm -hmm. of the drug by itself mm -hmm. is not particularly useful for the synergy prediction. Mm -hmm. uh, why do you think this is the reason? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. So for this one. For this particular challenge or this data set, uh, the you know the chemi chemiformatic features of the small molecules doesn't help in prediction. But I think uh, one reason could be this particular data set. Let's say in other um, other data set or other challenges, usually the chemiformatic chemi feature will help. Um, and just to remind me, or actually related to your question is, in this field currently, although this method can kind of approach in the, you know, the experimental replicate level accuracy, but still there's a long way to go because there are, there are several large data sets. A typical problem is when you build a model on one data set, it's, it cannot be translated or generalized, generalized very well to another data size. Uh, yeah, so, that's uh, one thing we need to address, actually. And actually, currently, in our lab, we have a project, ongoing project related to that one to, you know, to build a model and try to make it generalizable across different data sets. That's very important. I mean, in, you know, in real cases, I mean, in the drug development in practice, right? And another, I think, important thing is, okay, so we have this model. How can we deliver this model into a um, into a cancer patient, right? You have the genomic profile of the cancer. How accuracy will be your model to predict the response uh, of a cancer patient? This is a even you know harder problem, I think. How to deliver a model to you know, to to a real treatment? 
especially in this uh, area of uh, you know precision medicine, how can you use this uh, genomic profile to rectify your treatment? That's uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think two questions in this field remain to be solved. Yeah. And also, this data set has is very special in that it has very full uh, data set, a uh, very full features such as uh, profiling the drugs on many possible cell lines mm -hmm. and IC50 value mm -hmm. across different doses. Mm -hmm. In real life, there's probably not that many drugs has this. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Actually, in this, uh, I didn't mention a detail is for there are two challenges. But for sub challenge one, it has two sub challenges or sub challenge one. So one is uh, to use all the available information to make prediction. Second one is can you only make prediction based on only on the genomic profiles uh, without, let's say, the mono the dose response curve? That could be the real cases. Let's say when you, when you have a patient, it doesn't have a single drug response curve, but it ha you have the genomic profile. How accurate you can predict? That's uh, yeah. Uh, that's another thing. Uh, you will you will have well, all the information is better. Yeah. That's a uh, general information. Yeah. Um, they actually this month they have a um, uh, uh, the challenge flagship paper or already online. So they have they have you can find more information in that yeah. about the whole challenge and then they you know, assemble all the you know, top performing teams have a Vector model, and they also test the, the cross data set. <coughs> Actually, I think this kind of data set is pretty widely available. Because the drug companies, even labs here, who are interested in drug development, you have robots and you do many, many cell lines, many, many drugs, many drug combinations, and pro uh, analysis, robotic analysis. Yeah, yeah. I think this is this size uh, is already very large data size. Yeah, and a lot of information available. Yeah, but uh, uh, the key question is how can you build a model that can be generalized across data size? A real problem, and especially when you mention when you have some missing data, how can you apply a model? What did the other competitors do that? Active or what made the difference in the response with one opponent mm -hmm. to uh, make this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. So, in general, this, all these uh, models are kind of all these top teams are similar, but one unique, uh, unique uh, algorithm or unique method of Yuan Fang's winning solution is this one. Um, other teams they don't have uh, this uh, simulated post treatment profile. That's unique to her. I mean, that's a secret of her winning solution. Yeah. But in general, they all use uh, you know the uh, this three types of information to build machine learning models. There could be different models, but you know in general they do the same information. And make they didn't use the post treatment then. This is a new idea created by Yan Fang. So before that, no one had this idea. Because you know, in general, you don't have this information. You, for different drugs in the same cell line, you only have the pre-treatment molecular profile. So people you know, don't have this information. They can't and not make predictions. Or, you know, utilize this uh, information to make, uh, make prediction distinguishing different drugs. Questions? Yeah. So, can you uh, tell us whether you have any? You've worked a lot with Wang Pong. Mm -hmm. Do you have any general principles you think that she brings to different kinds of challenges? What makes her so much successful in these? Yeah. Things? So, I think uh, I think first thing. First thing, in general, this this is kind of a unique thing 
if uh, when you deal with the challenge of real data set or real problem, you can find some biological insight behind this uh, data and then build that insight into your own model. That will be one you know, very important winning secret one day. In general, and another thing is, um, let's say for this case, as uh, Chongxin mentioned, why the chemical informatics doesn't work, right? That's based on your experiment. You need to uh, look into the data and build a model based on cross validation results. Say, okay, this chemical informatics doesn't work here on this specific data set. And then you need to test a lot of different um, uh, hypotheses, I say. Uh, should I use HTTP as a key feature or not? Should I combine all these features? Should I build separate models? Should I try, I say, random forest or logistic regression or other models? That's all, all these um, different um, strategies you need to test and based on your cross validation and then find the best solution. That's, uh, I think, the second secret. You need a lot of time and effort uh, to to build a model, to build the best model, and achieve a better performance. Yeah. Or you have to run all of your files faster than anybody else. Uh, yeah. So you need to uh, write the code faster, and you know perform. Uh, and when you find some signal, you find this is a right track, and then you go go into deeper. You find this is doesn't provide any information. Just uh, you know stop. Wasting your time on the you know kind of informatic feature in this case, right? So you need all how and you know, to find the best solution. Yeah. So tell me if this is your observation also. I think sometimes she makes a very shrewd judgment. Uh, which kinds of data? Maybe just say about Kim Which kinds of data are less reliable, generate more noise <laughs> than useful findings? <laughs> and more noise is not good. <laughs> so I think a lot of people want maximal data in their system. Yeah. Probably a general mistake. Yeah. So, yeah, if, as you mentioned, if you put all the data, all the features into your model, that could be a huge model. Uh, the entire, you know, cross validation cycle should be longer. You And that's uh, not, a, you know, a good design of the experiment. Usually, uh, for example, you have a new feature, you need to have a test, let's say with or without this feature, what's your performance? Can you find a significant uh, improvement of, of your model? If you cannot, probably this is not a, an informative, I mean, this new feature or some extra feature, and then you make decision for the next step. Yes, so as you uh, mentioned, yeah. Yeah, I think that's also, some details and very helpful when you, uh, let's say, participate in a challenge or your, you want to build a, a model for your own project or your own data instead of, not, not, not about challenge, but you want to have a better model on your data yeah, to get your, you know, to get your experimental design or some other job discovery, yeah, other things. Okay, um, I think that's, yeah, thank you everyone. Happy for me.